What's mine is yours, or what's yours is mine. It lives in Coca-Cola. Jacket there. How's everybody doing? Good to have you all here. Thank you. You know the rules. You sit back, you laugh, we do the rest. We'll be back in a minute. Sean, get it going. All these guys are bums. You want to feel you out, see what you got. He's got just one thing on his mind. He's going to want to put you on your back right away. That's right. So what I want you to do is when you're both in close and you're hot and sweaty, I want you to throw it in the third rib. You push that in there and pushes all the bile out of the body right onto the floor. But Dad, it's just a date. Do I have to wear these gloves? Oh, darling, but it goes so nice with the mouthpiece we got you. At first, there was three champs and a baby. Now, Touch Tone Pictures presents three champs and a little lady. Now, remember, no contact below the belt. That's right. Let's get these up there. Oh, Dad. Now, do you remember what I told you? No, Dad. Or well, neither do I. But just in case, he may be pretty. He may have zits. Whatever you do, don't let him touch. Uh... Like a bee. Huh. Thanks, Dad. You know, you look pretty ecstatic, darling. Thanks. Oh, I think I might need some money, Dad. Oh, that's right. All pretty girls need money. How much you need, darling? Ten, twenty, thirty thousand? Here, take it off. Here, take, take the watch. Take the date to the house. Take it off. Just get your ball hate money away from uh, Mike, me. Mike, 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 it's over now. I'm sorry. I, I, I had a lithium flashback. I'm all right. It's okay, Dad. No, darling, that was pretty ludicrous. Hey, ludicrous. That's a pretty big way. <laughs> I remember the first time I fell in love. It was right after a big fight. I looked down and saw one of the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen, and it winked at me. Then I picked it up and put it back in the socket. <laughs> you know, I remember my first date. You do? You? No, I don't. <laughs> well, anyway, girls, just remember, if you have any problems, just call the house, I'll hop in the Mercedes, I'll drive... Uh, no! No, 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 no. <laughs> Dad, doorbell. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, Ollie, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Dad, Dad, Dad. This is my date, Jerry Cooney Jr. Yeah, how you doing, kid? Oh, gee! Oh, like father, like son. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, put your arm on my chair. Put your arm, put your arm on him. There you go, bro. All right. Goodbye, young people. Have a good Bye, time. Bye, kid. Kids, have fun. Have fun. Stay on your dad, honey. Boy. The first date, guys. Mm. I don't know if I'm ecstatic or ludicrous. <laughs> Why don't we just fight another round, Mike? All right, I'll tell you what. You guess who I am this time, all right? All right. All right, check it out now. We're in the second round, all right? You hit me with a right hand real soft. Boom, I'm down. Hey, where's my $22 million? What's the dagger? <laughs> Three champs and a little lady coming to a theater near you. Welcome back to the newlywed game. Biff and Bunny, that last round was incredible. 
Now it's time to see how our husband's answers match up with what their wives have said. Couple number three, Philip and Louise. If your wife was a dog, Phil, what kind of a dog would she be? Well, I'd have to say an Afghan because it's tall, it's regal, and it's elegant, everything that she is. Louise, want to show us your card? She said she would not be a dog. Uh, hey, Louise, it's just a, a, a game. I thought the whole point was to win. Well, uh, Philip, you can play the game, but I'm not going to answer a question that I find degrading. I know we've only been married a month, but I don't even think I like you. Well, are we having a verbal conflict, Philip? I know our therapist told us to avoid that. Maybe we should just end this marriage right now. Judges? Judges say end the marriage. Okay. On to couple number two, Biff. What kind of a dog is your wife? Well, Bob, I always tell Bunny that she's a she's just a cute little fluffy newborn pup with a, a warm little belly and a sharp, scratchy little little tongue and droopy little lovable puppy dog eyes. Bunny, show us your card. <laughs> hey, that's a dog dog <laughs> <correct answer. laughs> Which brings us to couple number one. Fred and Wilma. Guys, yeah. Well, Fred, what kind of a four-legged mutt are you married to? Hey, hey, hey. My wife ain't no mutt, all right? She's more like a pit bull. A pit bull? Yeah, a pit bull. A pit bull. Isn't that one of them dogs that, you know, clamps onto your behind and I will not so. let go no matter what? Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. She said... She said the butt. <laughs> That's from when we... That's from the butt. What kind of a dog is that? I said a poodle. Oh. oh. My head be looking like a poodle dangling from a dashboard. The pit bull's hand. So stupid. Okay, Bunny, what part of your body reminds Biff of food? Well, Bob, it's funny you should ask that. You see, Biff puts on these chaps and he tightens up the saddle and he straps on those spurs. Specifically, Bunny. Well, um, my face gets all flushed and my cheeks are like cherries. Cheeks like cherries. <laughs> Better put him out to stud. That's also another correct answer and 10 big points. It brings us back to Fred and Wilma. Well, let me tell you something, Bob. Missy over here ain't the only one with cherry cheeks. Except mine ain't the ones that's smiling. Fred, could be your big chance to get out of the doghouse. Cottage cheese. Cottage cheese thighs! Cottage cheese thighs. You know, Bob, she got those big lumps of fat on the back of her leg. It yeah. just hunk over, I mean, it overflow uh -huh. over her pantyhose. Uh -huh. I even drew a picture of it. Check it out. That's a good one. See, that's the fat right there. That's and when she walks like this, it's like we get. Come on in. Well, that's what we do. Double number two, you're our grand prize winner. This is Bob Eubanks oh, and the Hillary Wing. Francisco, huh? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, for our first act, 
tonight, all right? This guy is my home slice, man. I like to call him Coquito. You can call him Tiny, man. He's gonna be doing a scene from the Wizard of Oz, man. That's right. And performing with him is Miss Debbie Walsh. Yes, yeah, she's a volunteer in the infirmary. Check it out. It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be cooking. <laughs> Can oh you can. Mm, mm, goodness, I can talk again. Good, Tin Woodsman. Uh, look here, oil me some more, Dorothy. <laughs> Did that hurt? No, that felt good. I ain't been able to move my mouth in ages. I just scared I ain't got no heart. Well. We were all wondering if you'd like to come to the Emerald City with us and see if the Wizard of Oz would give you a heart. You look good, Dorothy. <laughs> He's gonna give the scarecrow a brain. You smell good too, baby. Tony, that's not in the script. Your breasts just look so nice and round. Look here, I got to have you, baby. <laughs> this next act, okay? He killed it the Apollo, he killed it the comedy store, he killed it the 7-Eleven, that's why they brought him down here to death row. <laughs> Let's give it up for the death row comic, come on! Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, really good to be here. So, is this thing on? Hey, take my life, please. <laughs> I just stabbed the guard 57 times and boy, my arm's tight. Oh, hey, what do you say, folks? You know, I was always a cut up in the family. Matter of fact, I cut up my family. Hey! You know, my next to pass, the Warren guaranteed me the best seat in the house. I told him, hey, I'll give you an electrifying performance. making people laugh. But see, the key to my jokes is not in the delivery, it's in the execution. All right, it's time. Um, anybody heard from the governor? Just kidding, y'all. His last assistant, he saw it in having a 25 to life, man. <laughs> Let's give it up for the magic of Charlie Magic. Come on. Good evening, gentlemen. I know what you're thinking. Hell, I'm right inside your heads. <laughs> Disappear an act for you. Like to introduce you to my beautiful assistant, Frank. Yeah. He's looking yeah. especially lovely tonight. Frank's gonna step inside this box now and disappear. And don't think I won't miss him because he cost me a whole carton of smokes. Yeah. Okay, now we say the magic words and tap the box twice with the magic wand. Guards to the left of me. Guards to the right. The guard in the tower is sleeping tonight. <laughs> Helto Skelto. Alakazam. Do the dance of doom and presto. <laughs> now I'm going to make Bill here disappear. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Now I'm going to make Stu disappear. Sorry, man. I don't know how to do that. Everyone, back in yourselves immediately. This is a lockdown.
Good evening, and welcome to the Justice Legions of America. As you all know, the Justice Legion recently settled an affirmative action suit brought against it by the United States. Apparently, it was felt that the Legion's membership has shown a discriminatory preference for white men and incredibly beautiful white women. As part of our settlement, without denying or admitting our guilt, I'd now like to present our newest members. Please welcome our first Jewish superhero, Beardman. Chico, the human computer, our first oriental. <laughs> and of course, the woman who originally brought the suit against us, Angry Woman, the world's only black feminist lesbian superhero. <laughs> and last but not least, let's give a warm Justice League welcome for the newest handicapped superhero, Handyman! <laughs> Thank you. I'm a man of few words. And I'd like to say to all those who never believed in the power of the handicap, there's a new sheriff in town, and this is his badge. Whoa! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's a giant handicap sign! Listen, I'd love to stay in chat, but there's someone who needs my help. I'll be back.
you can take 